Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Bread Precision. In this video, we are following up our video that we did on the latest and greatest in 415 with a deeper dive into what I think is probably the uh, coolest feature that has been added in 415, and that is Fox over WebSocket. Uh, if you're not familiar, WebSockets is a technology that you're probably using all the time without realizing it, and it allows you to uh, make a connection to a web server and then keep a persistent connection with that web server and talk uh, dire bi-directionally between each other uh, persistently. HTTPS doesn't allow this typically. Typically, there's a request that happens from your browser to a web server, Web server responds, connection's closed, and if uh, a connection needs to be made again, your local browser needs to make that uh, request again in order to make it happen. Uh, WebSocket is persistent, so you're all, you stay connected for as long as you need, and that enables Niagara and Tritium to uh, allow us to use Fox over HTTP or our 443 port that we're used to uh, using. So if we take a look here at the um, page that we were looking at in the initial video on the new features for 415, just real quick to go over again what we're talking about um, in graphic form. So without WebSockets, you're normally having to punch two holes through your firewall if you want to have public access to a supervisor or a JACE. Uh, you need one for your HTTPS and you need one for your FOXS in order to get your technical users to be able to get in there and program and do the things that they need to do from within Fox. And then uh, also your end users to be able to log in through the web browser and do what they need to do. Now with WebSocket, we only have one port and we enable basically all of the uh, functionality that we need for any kind of user. If they're using Workbench, if they're using a browser, uh, it all can happen now just with that 443 port open. And best of all, it's incredibly simple to set up and actually use. And it enables um, an additional really cool feature that um, we'll talk about here at the end of the video. So let's jump into Workbench now and actually dive in and see how this works. All right, so we're in Niagara now, and I've got a local instance of Niagara running on a machine here on my network. And then also on my network, I have a JSON 9000, which is also running 415. And then we also have, in the cloud, I'm running an instance of 415 as well. And we'll jump back and forth between these to demonstrate what's happening here. So on my JSON, I have the normal setup for my web service and my Fox service. This is basically set up exactly as you would expect. Um, 443 is open, and I've got 4911 open and enabled as well for the Fox side of things. Uh, but if we come over here, we will see I punch in the address for that. Uh, now I'm in the cloud. I'm, I'm working from there outside of the local network and I can get in and I can see uh, the station in the browser. So normal 443 connection that is up and working as I would expect. And if I come in here though and I go and do a connection to the station um, wstest.bpedata.com, if I do a, a normal Fox S connection, you're going to see it's going to spin and it's going to spin and it's going to spin and it's going to time out. Of course, I don't have 49.11 open. I only have 4.4.3. And this is where the WebSockets uh, feature comes in handy uh, because we can make this connection actually work and happen now. So we'll jump back to my local machine so that we can get into this JSON and configure it. And all we need to do is go to our Fox service. And then you'll see this new option called Fox over WebSocket enabled. We just need to tick that to true, do a save, and come back over to our uh, install that's in the cloud. I will try to connect once again, but this time I'm going to change this dropdown to be Station TLS WebSocket connection. Now it's going to ask ask me for the port. I'm using a normal 443, so that's fine. We'll hit OK, and sure enough, I can now connect to my station as. I normally would, and all the functionality is exactly the same. You'll see the only difference is the icon next to our Fox is slightly different than a normal Fox connection. And 
if you were paying extra attention, there's something else that's happening here. And uh, this is a more uh, technical, uh, cool feature. It's a little more complicated. Uh, but there's actually a uh, Cloudflare proxy that's happening between my JACE um, and the internet. So if you look here, uh, this connection is fully secure. Uh, I've got a fully signed certificate, and that's working as you would expect. But if I come in here and look at the station itself, and I look at my web server, my certificate is just the normal self-signed certificate. And then it's not even one that's, you know, technically... Um, uh, active or valid. So uh, we're making use of the feature that we talked about in a previous video, which is uh, letting Cloudflare do our SSL encryption uh, and our certificate uh, setup so that we don't have to worry about signing certificates or anything like that. Um, and normally that only works over uh, port 443. So if you wanted to do a Fox connection while doing this Cloudflare proxy, it wasn't possible. You couldn't do it. You could do it, but you'd have to pay for like Cloudflare's enterprise, no price listed kind of feature set, which is obviously well out of the bounds for uh, our needs. Now with Fox over um, WebSocket, it comes out of the box. Everything works. What you're seeing now is going through Cloudflare. And if I look on my session info, you'll see I have a fully signed certificate. Everything is good to go. Um, everything looks nice. You'll notice that I didn't even have to uh, click OK to accept the certificate because it's fully signed. So just one of the added benefits of doing this WebSocket over, uh, or Fox over WebSocket, excuse me. Um, really, really handy. Uh, and if you're a little bit more technical with the IT side of things, some really cool features that you can um, make use of because of it. So hopefully that was helpful and informative for you. Um, we'll have more videos here on all the latest features in 4.15. Thanks as always for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below if there's more details that you'd like to see on the WebSocket stuff. Any specific things you'd like to see tried or um, would like to know more details about, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.